Good morning and Shabbat Shalom. The opening verse of this week's Torah portion says, Adam, a man from amongst you that will bring an offering to God. And Rashi asks, why does it say Adam, a man? Why doesn't it say Ish, a person? Ish is the more common term used in the Torah. And Rashi answers and says that it's referring as well to Adam, Adam, the first human being. That just like when Adam brought offerings to God, he only brought from his own possessions because there was no one else in the world that he could possibly steal from. So too, when we make offerings to God, we have to make sure that what we give to God as a contribution, as an offering, has to be money that was earned honestly, that it truly belongs to us, that there was no deception or fraud, that there was no deception or fraud in the earning of that money contributed or offered to God. But perhaps there's a second answer to why the Torah uses the word Adam, Adam. You know, the eyes of the world and the hearts of the world are with the Ukrainian people. And it reminds you of the story that happened in 1911. In 1911, there was the famous Bayless trial, where a Jew by the name of Mendel Bayless, living in Kiev, was accused of killing a Christian child to get blood for the matzah. Now, you know that one of the blood, the, one of the famous uh, false, horrific accusations made against Jews was that Jews would kill Christian children for blood for their matzah. That's how ludicrous these anti-Semitic claims were, but yet the world would choose to believe it. And many Jews, unfortunately, lost their lives because of these false accusations. And a month before Passover, 1911, in March, a Christian child was found murdered. And they accused Mendel Bayless of murdering this child for their blood. Well, he was imprisoned for two years. And in 1913, right after Yom Kippur, the trial opened. And it was basically the Jewish people on trial for using blood, which is obviously forbidden in the Torah to eat blood. We salt our meat to drain the blood, but using it for our matzah. And so all the anti-Semites of the world gathered with the prosecution to try to accuse the Jew. And all the great rabbis and leaders around the world stood with Mendel Bayless and helped the defense win the case, which he ultimately did win and was acquitted of these insane, ludicrous, false, baseless charges. But one of the things the prosecution said in the trial is that the Torah says, referring to the Jewish people, that the Jewish nation are called Adam, a man. And they said, you see, the Jews only consider themselves human. They don't consider the nations of the world human. That's why they commit such atrocities. And the defense posed the following response to the prosecution based on the advice of great rabbis. And they said as follows, in Hebrew, every single word has a singular and a plural. So ish, for example, is a man, anashim is plural, many men. Isha is a woman, nashim is plural, many women. Tapuach is an apple, tapuchim is many apples. Har is a mountain, harim is many, ap uh, many mountains. There's only one word in Hebrew that there is no plural for, and that's adam, man. There is no way to say Adam in the plural. And that is what the defense said to the court. What it means is that the Jewish people are Adam. There is no plural, meaning we're one singular nation. We feel as one, we are united. We are one organism, one body, one being. And that's the message of the opening verse in the Torah, that when we make sacrifices for one another, Jew and non-Jew, it's because we feel connected and realize we're all one human being, like Adam, the first human being. And when I feel that the next person is a part of me, then it's not even a sacrifice, it's like giving to yourself. And when we see what's happening in Ukraine, the tragedy, the destruction, the loss of life, the power of evil, the good thing that we see is the unity of the world and standing up against Putin and Russia not only from nations, but individual companies that are closing their businesses in Russia just to stand with solidarity with the Ukrainian people. And everyone is making sacrifices, but we don't even feel like it's a sacrifice. It's what we do for each other because all human beings feel connected with one another because we are truly one. With this message of unity, together we will prevail over the darkness.